Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of The Conference Room here on the Q92 Sports Network. Uh, this episode, pleasure to be joined by head coach slash now athletic director, uh, Coach Goodman of the Alliance Aviators, kind enough to give us some of his time, one of his busiest times of the year. Uh, coach, good to see you. How's the summer been so far? Summer's been good, you know, been busy, but uh, wouldn't have it any other way. So we're really excited where we're at with uh, everything going on. Yeah, before we get into everything with the football team, first of all, congratulations uh, on becoming athletic director of Alliance High School as well. But, I mean, uh, God bless you. you got to be – I mean, like you weren't busy enough running the Alliance football team and getting it where it is right now. Now you're in charge of every sport at the high school. Can you talk about uh, what made you decide that you wanted to take on that role? What, what it's been like trying to, you know, get all the sports in, in Alliance going in the right direction yeah. now? Yeah, just, you know, I, I decided to kind of accept that role because, uh, you know, I really believe in what we're doing here. Um, really love the kids that we have here, not just the football players, but all our kids and all our sports, and even the, the, the students that aren't involved in sports. Um, and just, just that desire and, you know, thinking I can make a bigger impact, not just in football and in the classroom, but like you said, in all our sports and supporting those sports in different ways. And it's been really cool to see since I've been here, kind of some of our sports programs and athletic programs come together and seeing an overall improvement. Um, and not just not just our, you know, the football program, not just the basketball program, but mm -hmm. into our girls sports as well. I mean, our softball team had a great spring last year. You know, we had a, a lot of boys sports that won uh, EBC titles last year. So, um, you know, just being able to interact. And I love interacting with coaches. So being able to interact with coaches and, and all our student athletes in different ways and trying to continue to drive our athletics forward, which will drive our district forward as well. You know, I, I could tell just by the way I answer that question that you truly do. You, you care about all the sports at Alliance, but when you come to a position where you take over the job, but you are the head coach of one of the sporting teams, did you feel any pressure to kind of like maybe go out of your way to make sure the other sports know that, hey, look, yes, I run the football program, but I, you guys aren't an afterthought. Any of these other sports, we're going to get every one of you guys the attention you deserve. Uh, you know, I mean, that, that's always kind of a concern. You know, and I'm not going to lie. It was a concern taking over the job. The, yeah. you know, the head football coach is also the AD, so he's going to give the football team the preferential treatment. Um, but I think the, the – relationships I've established with a lot of the coaches before I took over as AD, they were very comfortable knowing I was coming in. And, you know, I've always been a person and I tell my kids this all the time, uh, you know, your actions speak louder than your words. And I think, you know, the actions that I, and I try to give actions where I'm supporting all our programs, showing up to different sporting events, you know, giving them weight room time, helping out in the weight room um, and, and showing and not just telling them that I'm, I'm going to care about their sports as well has really uh, won those coaches over. And like I said, we, I think we got a really good thing going here um, with all our coaches on the same mission of driving all athletics forward here at Alliance City Schools. All right, Coach, now it's time to talk about some aviator football. There's a lot to talk about here while, while we got you here. Uh, first of all, let's touch on uh, the off-season program. You know, watching you guys uh, on Twitter and seeing the, the motivational quotes you put up and the things that you post, uh, man, you guys, Alliance was getting right after it the second they could yeah. after this season. You could definitely tell it. And you can see that in the kids as well. Uh, just talk about the off-season program as far as like lifting and things like that. H how are the kids uh, this this you know spring and summer? How good has the program been here? And now your third year going into head coach. Oh, really great. We had a really really good off-season program. Um, you know, our, our weight room numbers have been really really good attendance wise and you know weight wise. You know, gaining weight, putting good weight on the bar, moving weight. Um, getting faster. I love when our guys get out and play other sports because it makes them more athletic. Um, so a lot of our football players were contributors on, you know, the EBC championship basketball team, yes. and the track team and the baseball team. Um, so just a great offseason all around for our guys. Um, I think they're really bought into what we're doing here. Um, and go, like you said, going into year three, you kind of see, OK, now it's it's really starting to become Coach Goodman's program and and we're moving things in the right direction. How, how happy are you with, with, with where it is now in year three? You know, everyone knows the system. Everyone knows the expectation. Now everyone knows the Coach Goodman culture. Right. How happy yeah. are you with, with the buy-in, where it's at, and where it's trickling down? You know, it's like JV, freshmen, as they're starting to come up and get closer to the varsity program. Yeah, extremely pleased. I mean, our, our varsity team is really bought into what we're doing. Um, you, and, again, actions. You see it in their actions. You, it's not just all talk. You see how they conduct themselves as individuals on the football field, off the football field, in the community. And you really see those things starting to take shape. And then as you just kind of hinted to, now you start to see it trickle down. You see the freshmen starting to take notice of it, getting down to our eighth grade and our seventh grade, and even down to our youth program, because we're trying to make this, you know, a K through 12 program and not just the Varsity Alliance Aviators. So really happy where it's at, but got to continue to strive forward and make sure, you know, we're consistent each and every day. 
Uh, another thing, Coach, I've noticed in your program, it's really been interesting to me, and, and, and other schools do this as well, but it seems like you, you guys do it really often. Uh, the speakers coming in to talk to your kids, uh, especially alumni, players that have been there, walked those halls and were and – were, had great, you know, collegiate careers, things like that. Uh, what, what was it that made that to be something you really wanted to incorporate with the program? Yeah, there, there's really two things that I was trying to incorporate with that. One of my big things whenever, you know, taking over programs, you try to make the alumni feel part of it. Right. Um, because they've been here, they paved the way for all of us. Even, you know, we had Coach Kuzieski in, and I told our kids, Coach Kuz is a guy I'm chasing. He's the only coach that ever won a playoff game in the Lions history. Um, so those are guys that that pave the way for us. So we want to pay our respects and also make them feel part of the program because it tells our kids and it tells those guys that, again, we're not just you're not just an Alliance Aviator for the four years you're here. You're an Alliance Aviator for life. Um, so making them feel part of it and then just, you know, having those guys really come in and talk about why they're proud to be from Alliance, um, because mm -hmm. I, that's something I played for. One of my actual line coaches in high school was an Alliance grad. And something that he really had it when I was 15 years old, I heard about Alliance Ohio because he was so proud to be from Alliance. So we're really trying to, you know, instill that in our kids. And I think our speakers that have come in and have all shared that same message to them. And you really see it uh, taking hold with our kids because when we go out on a Friday night, yeah, we're playing for each other, we're playing for our family, but we're also playing for Alliance on the front of the jersey. So we want our kids to understand that. That's, 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 a, that's a great answer. And I think that's great because I, I, I think when, when you welcome back, Coach, uh, those old alumni, you make them feel like, hey, we respect and thank what you did for the program, what you did for the community. I think that only makes the bond with the community yeah. and, and and the team and, and your coaching staff. It just makes it that much stronger. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's something, you know, younger generation they don't really they don't even understand. I I really have learned a lot since I've gotten here too. The rich tradition that's been oh. here. I mean, we you know I'm sitting in the coaches room right now. There's a banner right over there. 1958 state champions. Hmm. I mean. They've been playing football for a long time, part of the All-American Conference with Camp McKinley and Mass and Steubenville and Warren Harding. I mean, mm -hmm. just rich tradition that's been here. So, mm -hmm. again, when our kids understand that tradition, it's not just now. It's not just the EBC. But and, and the really cool thing about Alliance is the generation of families that come through. A lot of our speakers touch on that, that th there can be names like the Zerbrooks. His dad played yeah. here in the 80s. Now uh, Brennan's playing here. You know, you got the Hawkins. There have been a ton of Hawkins that come through. You got the Davises. Kendall Davis was a stud in the early 2000s. We had Caden last year and cave on this year so i mean you see all these families coming through which makes alliance to me a really really cool place not only to play football but to live and grow up and be a part of a community yeah and, and you, you touched on some of those names too and some of those guys have already come through and, and played under you and and now they're playing collegiately and one, another thing you do on your social media that's great is the support you show for the kids as far as when they commit to a college to play football or when they even have offers really cool to yeah. see how you support them and how, you know, no matter what school they're going to, that's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, do you, do you stay in touch with some of your players or now get ready to start playing on Saturdays instead of Fridays yeah. with you? Yeah, absolutely. I tell these kids all the time. I'm not just your coach for four years. I'm your coach for life, baby. Right. right. A guy like Stephen Gales out at Toledo. I text him all the time. And got Caden Davis making sure he's getting through summer workouts. Well, you know, even the guys that played for me in North Canton that are still out, but you know, I still take, you know, give Connor Ashby a hard time that he should you know, get back on the football field. At yeah, man. What's he doing? So, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah I, I get on those guys all the time. And, you know, that's something again, that to me is really cool about coaching is it's, it's a relationship you develop for life. And, Again, those guys go on and they're representing Alliance. They're repping that A out of Toledo and they're repping that A in Youngstown and wherever Brandon ends up going. And, you know, Brandon Alexander, who, who didn't play for me, but, you know, I've gotten to know a little bit out of Youngstown State as well. Um, those guys are repping that A out there. So we want to make sure that we're checking in on them and make sure that, you know, they have the support at home as well as where they're at, where they're at currently now. You, you touched on Zerbrug and he's such a unique, uh, unique player. We had a chance to talk to him a few weeks ago and, and he was great, but great kid. Uh, obviously comes from great stock when your father was a quarterback at Michigan. I mean, that's, that's, that's hard to live up to. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have a kid like that coach that every school mm -hmm. is, is after your quarterback. And that's gotta be a lot of pressure. Can you talk about the professionalism and the mindset that he's had? Because he seems still so focused on Alliance football and so zoned in and such a, it seems like, although that's so important to his future, it's in no way, at least from what I can tell, blocking him from his goals this year with Alliance football. Yeah, I mean, recruiting, and that's what a lot of people don't know. I mean, recruiting is tough, especially right. these high school kids. You know, it, it was tough when I was going through, but it's even harder now with all the social media and you're comparing yourself to other people. And, you know, the timeline is sped up and the transfer portal gives you limited opportunities. So it's a really difficult process. It's an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Um, and these are 16, 17, 18 year old kids that are making life decisions um, that impact their future greatly. 
And, and I, the one thing I've always said about Brendan is he has handled the process more maturely than any, any kid I've ever had go through. I mean, wow. he, and he is one of the more mature kids I've ever coached. Um, but he just kind of goes with the flow and he, he knows, you know, it's going to work out for him. And it really has. And it's easy to sit here now on July 21st when he's got Big Ten offers and SEC offers. <laughs> um, but, you know, a couple months ago when every school was coming through, the, you know, and watching throw and not sure if they're going to pull the trigger on him or not. And you know, that can really mess with you. But Brennan has stayed even keel through it all, like you said. He's confident himself and his abilities, no matter where he's landing, they're going to get a good quarterback. Um, and like you said, he he has his priorities straight because he's focused on right. 2023 Lions Xavier's. And I credit to him. That's why he wanted to make his decision so early so he could get out of the way and focus on having a great senior year. And, again, it does a great job setting an example for our kids because they see, hey, if I just focus on myself and being the best version of myself for the Lions Aviators, then all that other stuff's going to take care of itself. So, Brennan's done a fantastic job handling this, and and I, I, I'm fortunate that he did such a great job handling this because it's made my life as his coach even easier. Well, now let's talk about that uh, 2023 uh, schedule that I can't believe is about a, a, a month away. Again, you start off with a great out-of-conference game, Coach. That I think that Alliance Lake uh, home and home, that's been our last been fun. We can't we look forward to broadcasting that. But you look at that schedule, a tough out-of-conference schedule, and then you know, with the EBC schedule there on there, you've got six teams that were in the playoffs last year. So not going to be an easy schedule for you guys this year. No, that's something that that we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure we have a challenging schedule. You know, we, we thought, you know, we had a tough draw in the playoffs last year against Youngstown Cheney. It was a very talented team. And um, we thought, you know, part of that draw was because our schedule wasn't where it should be. So we wanted to go out and beef it up a little bit. And that's what we've done. And, uh, you know, great out of league schedule. You know, Lake is you're not going to find a better team in, in Stark County than Lake. Um, you know, Niles McKinley is always a solid program. That's a, that's a tough, uh, you know, old, like I said, all, all American conference throwback game streets, bros had a lot of success, you know, Akron Ellis always had athletes and central Catholic's is always tough. And then you get into uh, the EBC play. And I, I've always said it since I've been here, you know, the EBC has been about as good as, as it's been in a while. Um, and, and there's no gimmies in that league either. Uh, so we got to be prepared at all 10 weeks uh, because we're going to get quality competition all 10 weeks. Yeah, and it's funny, Coach, because uh, I, I don't believe the EB – I believe this. The EBC doesn't quite get enough credit or the credit that it deserves. When you look at that conference, uh, usually all, almost yearly putting three to four at the least uh, teams in the playoffs and the totally different styles of offense that you can run into from week to week. I mean, you can go spread five wide, no running backs, and you have a Carroll to roll into town that runs a totally – totally different offense and that can be tough from week to week to, to shift your defensive scouting and coaching i think the ebc i mean salem's always strong like i said Carrollton, west branch has been a powerhouse lately uh minerva was coach speakman now his second year with that program uh, marlington has a new head coach i just feel like it's a, it's a tough conference and sometimes in some ways overlooked a little bit yeah yeah i agree you know coming from a, a federally school to here i totally get it because you're kind of in the shadows of the federal league in stark county mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of some of our more Eastern schools in Salem and, and West Branch kind of in the shadows of Youngstown. So we're kind of just in the background. But, man, we play a lot of good football here, good programs. As you just alluded to, you know, Coach Lamos does a fantastic job of getting those kids to play physical football. Coach Cooper and those guys got it rolling out at West Branch. Um, you know, Marlington and, and Minerva, it's a matter of time before because, you know, public school football, it's, it's a pendulum. <laughs> They're going to swing back and, and you got to be ready for it. And, you know, like I said, there's no gimmies in EBC. And uh, we're fortunate to be in this league and, and it makes every week fun for us and for the fans as well. Absolutely. I mean, that, obviously, week 10, the Alliance Marlington robbery is always, always a great game. It's always fun when those two communities get together. But, I mean, a lot of people have that week eight game circle, Coach Goodman, not to look ahead when you haven't even started pads yet. But, man, that, that game week eight at West Branch, that, that's going to be – that has potential to be a very huge, very fun football game. Yeah, yeah, it, it will be. And we know that it was a fun game last year. Unfortunately, we came on the wrong side of that. Um, but, you know, Coach Cooper, like I said, he does a fantastic job with those kids. They got a great group of kids coming through right now. Um, and, and our kids and their kids have kind of battled all the way up through, you know, every year, you know, down to our freshmen and our sophomores and our juniors and now our seniors. They, it seems to be kind of them battling every year. So it should be a good rivalry game and we're excited to get there. But we got seven weeks of football to take care of before we even get to that. So uh, we got to focus on, the, on week. We got to focus on this week of camp before we even get to week one. So <laughs> we gotta, I, might, I might have jumped the gun there, Coach. I apologize. Yeah. No, but, uh, you're fine. Uh, you're, you're right. There's a lot of football to be played. But uh, I can you believe we're, we're, we're this close to uh, real camp starting and we are, what, a month away from the season? Yeah, yeah. It, it always goes fast. And 
But this is the time that it's exciting because, you know, everyone's 0-0 and everyone's got the same goals to win their league and go to the playoffs and win a state championship. So this is the fun time when you're kind of just worried about yourself and uh, getting your team ready to go. And uh, it all sorted itself out starting August 18th. So we're excited to get going here. All right, Coach, I'm going to let you go on a fun one here. One thing I know kids like, and that's why I know you, you've got Alliance in, in, in the right in the right track. You guys are heading the right place. Kids love their swag. They love their uniforms. They love all that. And you guys came out a while back, and you, you, were, you were hinting at a new Alliance helmet this year, new yeah. swag for the kids. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got it right. They, they love the swag, and that's something yep. that I was fortunate. When I came in here, all our different jersey combinations that we got, and you know, we've done the white helmets for a while and just kind of thinking, how can we put a little flair on this season? And we were talking to some of the guys and, you know, what's really cool with these blue helmets. And for me, when I think Alliance, I think Columbia Blues. So that's one of the reasons right. that drove to us. But another really cool connection when we talk about our generational families, when Chris Zerberg was a quarterback here, they had blue helmets. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, with Brennan being our quarterback going into this senior year, having the, the blue helmets making a comeback and, uh, you know, just something for our kids to get excited about. And it did turn out really sharp. When we get these decals on, we're going to be looking good on Friday. So yeah, look good. that Deion Sanders look good, feel good, play good. <laughs> there you go, Coach. Well, I got to tell you, look really good on Twitter. And we're looking forward to seeing it again. We'll be broadcasting uh, six games of yours this season. So six Alliance games you guys can check out on the Q92 Sports Network. You see them on the stream there, right on the screen. We're looking forward to bringing those games to you. Uh, Coach, can't thank you enough for taking the time. You're always so gracious to me or any of the Q92 sports people whenever we're covering your football games. I appreciate you talking to us and giving us your time and, and helping us out. Uh, you've got Alliance, not just football, but I think the entire athletic department there going in the right direction. Good luck to you this season. Thank you for the time, and we'll be bugging you on the sidelines here before you know it. Yeah, thanks, Christian. I appreciate all your coverage. It, it means a lot to us. All right, Coach. You have a great day. Thank you so much for the time. You too. All right, that was Coach Goodman, the head coach and athletic director of the Alliance Aviators. You see that schedule there and there on your screen. Those are the games we're going to be covering for you on the Q92 Sports Network. Some great Alliance football you can look forward to hearing uh, both on AM 1310 and Q92RadioSports.com. If you're an Alliance fan watching this video and you want to support the Aviators, there you go, that number on your screen. Just call it, 330-450-9250. Ask for John Bozica or Mark O'Brien, and you can have your business advertising and supporting Alliance all season long. This has been the latest edition of The Conference Room, Episode 5 with Coach Goodman, the head football coach and athletic, athletic director for the Alliance Aviators. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time for Episode 6.